Broadcasting to you from somewhere deep in the heart of Texas. Once again, it's me, Honey Ann. The late Honey Ann. Hello, hello, hello. Now, y'all got to bear with me today. I'm having some connectivity issues. I don't know if it's because it's so windy or what, but as you know, my internet is one step above dial up. I'm so country, y'all. So I hope everybody's doing well today. I pray that you're feeling blessed. You're walking in joy. Never let the devil steal your joy, people. We are saved by God's grace, his never-ending love. We are the light of the world, so shine that light brightly. Be that beacon that only you can be. So, with chapter 12 of Revelations, um, we, we have another, uh, you know, parenthetical portion of Revelation that tells us about the seven great personages of the tribulation, particularly of the last half. And um, so that's where I'm going to pick up. So we're going to begin studying chapter 12 uh, with chapter 12, 14 through 20. And we have another, you know, portion, like I said, of Revelation that tells us about the seven great um So these seven personages um, are a woman who represents the nation of Israel, the great red dragon, which is a picture of Satan, the male child, who is the Lord Jesus, Michael, the archangel, the only archangel, you know, Jude verse nine, who represents the holy angels and the remnant of the woman, which is, you know, is, is Israel. So the beast out of the sea, and that's the world dictator, that's verses 13, 1 through 10. And the beast out of the earth, the false prophet and religious leader of the world, that's verses, um, that's chapter 13, verses 11 through 17. So let me point out that chapter 12 is, that it's primarily a conflict involving angelic forces, particularly the fallen angels or demonic world under Satan's authority. Okay. But let us beware that Satan often uses human means to you know, through his ignorance, has threatened to wipe, you know, Israel off the face of the earth. He's called Israel a stinking corpse. So what people like, you know, that don't realize is that in just a short while, And it's true that the nation of Israel, generally speaking, is a rebellious people when it comes to the things of God. And they're not what God intended them to be. But they are still his chosen people and nothing has changed his mind, okay? So as we can see here in chapter 12, there will be a remnant that will turn to God. Although it's a shame, you know, you know, that two thirds of the Jews will be destroyed in the tribulation. You know, Zechariah asks that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die.
Okay, I'm back. I got kicked off just now. Like I said, I'm having connectivity issues. So you just have to bear with me. Okay, there's a slideshow. It's back. See, I haven't even been on here more than five minutes, and I'm already getting kicked off. So, I might have to just reschedule it. I don't know. I might have to call at and to send somebody out here. We'll see how it goes. So, you know, we pray for, for, for the peace of Jerusalem and our set. He's building our new home right now. You know, let us never forget that behind the scenes in our in our doomed and damned, you know, our arch enemy Satan and his demonic forces are there, you know, working against our utter destruction. You know, and in this chapter, we'll see that the warfare occurs first on earth, then in heaven. You know, the heavens where the birds and planes fly and finally on earth again, okay? So here in this chapter, we can clearly see the ultimate cause and answer to the problem of anti-Semitism, which has been going on from the very early beginnings of Israel's history. So let me say that part of the reason for the hatred and, and persecution, you know, which the Jews have endured over the centuries, is the divine judgment of God for disobedience and rejection of his word. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 10. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. And if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, oxen, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. 7. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face, and they shall come out against thee one way, and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee and thy storehouses, and in all thou settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself, and he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways, and all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee. Oh, that wind is something else today, isn't it? I might have to shut the door. So, you know, I'm glad that we're not under law, you know, um, aren't you, dear heart? I mean, come on, <laughs> we're under his marvelous grace. Of course, the Gentiles never were under the law, you know, Psalm 147, 19 and 20 says, 19, he sheweth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He has not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. 
praise ye the Lord. So another reason Satan so hates Israel is because Israel was the means that God used to bring forth the, the deliverer, you know, the Lord Jesus Christ. In Genesis 3.15, we have the prophecy of this conflict and God's declaration of Satan's defeat through the seed of the woman. Notice, not the seed of a man. The nation God chose to bring forth the deliverer was Israel, as seen in the covenant that God made with Abraham. And so Israel has been the perpetual object of Satan's hatred, the ultimate cause behind all anti-Semitism, hatred of the Jewish people. And here in verse 1 of chapter 12, you know, is the first of a number of places where we find the word sign, you no know, wonder and sign, it has the same meaning. While no signs appear in chapters 1 to 11, at least seven signs are mentioned in chapters 12 to 19. You know, three are in heaven and four on earth. Only one is a sign of good, 12-1. The others are oaths of evil or judgment from God. So the first of seven personages is described as a great wonder in heaven. And it's a sign or symbol of important truth, not just merely a wonder. So listen as I read verses 1 and 2. One, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Two, and she being with child cried travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. The sun... And though the sign is seen in heaven, it portrays a reality on earth because the woman pictured is persecuted by Satan in the great tribulation. The woman is described as clothed with the sun, having the moon under her feet and on her head a crown of 12 stars. And the description of the woman is 37, 9 through 11. And he, Joseph, dreamed yet another dream and told it, his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more, and be, behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obedience to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the same. Joseph is the best picture in the Bible of Jesus as a person, you know, is concerned. Remember, Joseph became ruler in Egypt. Egypt is always a type of the world, you know. And in that account, there in Exodus, Joseph's brothers did indeed bow down to Joseph. And the brethren are a picture of all the Jews, you know, someday bowing and worshiping at the feet of Jesus the King. So... You know, if you want to look as far as um, up, you know, the signs in the heavens and in the sky, we know for for a fact that um, that on um, nine twenty three of seventeen, that great sign appeared in in the sky in the heavens, and we know also that it hap it's already happened four other times. It occurred in 1827, 1483, 1293, and 1056. Okay. So, you know, that's how we that's how we know when they say that there's nothing new under the sun, all these things that have happened will happen again. It's 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 cyclical, you know, there's cycles of things in time that happen. So anyway, some writers believe that these heavenly bodies, the sun, the moon, uh, you know, they represent Jacob and Rachel identifying the woman with the fulfillment of the um, Abrahamic covenant. But, but like I said, these signs are cyclical. They occur, you know, ever so often. It's already happened five other times now.
Just one second. I'm gonna go shut the door. So, hello Eliza, how are you? Good to see you. Blessings to you too, sister. So, in the same context, the 12 stars represent the patriarchs and the 12 sons of Jacob. Oh, that darn door opened back up. I'm sorry, hang on a second. Ooh, that's a powerful wind. I'm here to tell you. <laughs> okay. So Israel, you know, is without, and Eliza, um, what you're looking at on the screen right here, those are pictures of our forbidden history. That's part of our past that they've kept from us. So eh, it's amazing to me. I ponder and I uh, just, I'm in awe with the architecture that existed when we were led really different. And if you see it messing up, it's because I have, today my internet is really bad. I've already kicked off my stream once. So, you know, I'm just, I'm out in the country and I'm one step above dial up. So um, we're just having to bear with it. <laughs> and I'm reading um, in the book of Revelation right now. But um, yeah, the pictures are just amazing. The architecture, the, you know, the buildings and, and things of that nature. So, all right, I'll pick back up where I left off. Okay, cool. All right. So Israel is without any doubt the source from which, you know, we've come many of the blessings of God, including the Bible, you know, in Christ Jesus. And in Romans 9, 1 through 5, you know, um, one says, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, two, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart, three, for I, I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, and according to the flesh, and four, who are Israelites and to whom and it pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises? Five, whose are, are the fathers and of whom, as concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all? God blessed forever. Amen. You know, okay. So the 12 stars refer to the 12 tribes, you know, Jacob's 12 sons. So when we talk about Israel, we're really talking about the offspring of Jacob's 12 sons. You know, the man Jacob and the man Israel are one and the same. And God changed Jacob too. And also in Genesis 35, God changed his name. So the persecution of the woman, it coincides with the persecution of Israel. So we're told that she is with child and waiting the imminent birth of her son, in which we know that a lot of um, our scripture is pertaining to astronomical signs, you know. So there's a there are other and, and there's other meanings behind it too, but there's a lot of it has has to do with astronomical signs. I mean, like for instance, in December of um, 2020, we saw the sign of the Son of Man coming in the clouds. The astronomical sign occurred. of it so anyway okay so so there are other representative women that are mentioned in the book of revelation such as jezebel she's in 220 and she represents a false religion as a system then there's another representative woman called the harlot in 17 and she's the apostate church of the future or the present we don't know could be who knows <laughs> you know the apostate church you know it's it's going to be made up of all religious organizations that are left behind when the one true church is removed. So, I mean, I feel like they're trying to form that right now with the one world system. So, um, you know, when the one true church is removed from the earth, you know, and, and some of us think it'll be headed up by the, by the by Pope, you know, which one, I don't know. You know, they say this Pope here's the last one, but 
you know, it just depends on how, how your how great your studies are, or how deep they go. You know, the Antichrist, he will be a great political leader. You know, the one world dictator and the false prophet will be the world religious leader and probably a pope. I mean, we'll talk more about that when we come to chapter 13. OK, so and then another woman typical speaking as a bride, you know, the lamb's wife in 197, the true church joined the Christ. In the Old Testament, Israel frequently is presented as the wife of Jehovah and often in her character as being unfaithful to her husband. Mm -hmm. So um, so in Jeremiah 3, 6 through 8 and 6, it says, The Lord said unto uh, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel has done? She has gone up unto every high mountain and under every green tree. And there hath played the harlot. Religious fornication, she worshipped idols. I mean, 7 says, And I said after she had done all these things, Turn thou unto me. But she returned not. And her treacherous sister Judah saw it. At a certain point, the ten northern tribes made up of the northern kingdom and the two southern tribes made up the southern, you know, and, and it was called Judah. So eight says, and I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Let me see. Here it goes again. Okay, there we go. But here in chapter 12 of the Revelation, you know, is the is the godly remnant of Israel, a third standing true to God. In the time of the great tribulation. Okay. Okay. So three. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. And seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third of the, st of the stars, angels of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Okay. And there was seen another sign in heaven. Notice, these are signs that are given to us. They're not literal. These right here. Okay. So the red dragon is identified as Satan in verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So in this second sign, the true character of Satan is revealed. He's called great because of his vast power. He controls the nations of the world and offered them to the Lord Jesus if he would just worship him in Matthew 4. Verses 8 and 9. Worship of himself is Satan's ultimate goal. The kingdoms of this world are his at this present time. He controls them today. In that day, it was Rome, but he was controlled. You know, he's controlled every nation and still does today. I mean, did you know that Satan has appointed certain of his powerful demons to direct the affairs of nations? I mean, why do you suppose the entire world is in turmoil as it seems? These demons are directing the affairs of the nations. I mean, listen, listen as I read you this great truth, okay? In Daniel chapter uh, 10, verses 7 through 19, 7. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. Saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves. 8. Therefore, I was left alone and I saw the great vision. And there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption, and I retained nine. Yet heard I the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. Ten, and behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. Eleven, and he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee I am now sent. 
And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. 12. Then he said unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days, three weeks. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. This prince that Gabriel is talking about is a powerful demon over Persia, and apparently this demon has demons under him, you see. So, in verse 20, Then he said, Knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee? And now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grecia shall come. So I want us to notice that Gabriel told Daniel that as soon as he left, another would be there to oppose him. And when I'm gone forth, lo, the prince of Grecia will come. You see? Yeah, there are, there is two moons up there. Okay, sorry about that. Uh -huh. There wasn't supposed to be any sound. So, you know, it's, it's an ongoing and everlasting battle as long as we're here in this world. This is the first biblical reference to Michael the Archangel. And by this account, here we're assured of the fact that Satan and his forces are busy here on earth. And especially in the last days, some of these presidents, prime ministers, kings, queens, chiefs, and what have you, they're controlled by the devil, guys. I mean, we think of the tyrant of, of Iran, right? You know, Ahmadinejad, or we think about Chavez of Venezuela. You know, both are prime candidates. And I'm sure, you know, we have our part of them here in this country, too. I mean, when we see some of the laws being passed and forced on, on the people, you know, you know, this account here in Daniel 10 reveals to us a heavenly warfare going on. And it reveals there's a great deal more about this universe in which we live than meets the eye. You know, there's a great deal more to it than we could ever, ever possibly fathom, you know, that we could know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. You are so right about that harm and that fear. That's why we're not to walk in fear. We're to remain in joy because we know we're saved by the grace of God. You know, because we believe. That's all we had to do first and foremost was take that step and believe. And because we believe and call upon Jesus, we're saved. And, you know, due to that, we are joyful no matter what happens. People falling dead around us, wars happening in our faces. They can't touch us because we, we are a joyful people. We are walking in God's grace. Amen. We are not to be fearful ever. You know, I mean, okay, so back to this point. This reveals that in the world, which is unseen by us, there is a conflict going on, right? And there's a conflict of the ages between good and evil, light and darkness, you know, God and Satan. And it reveals that there's satanic forces and heavenly forces. So here we're told that Gabriel was hindered from coming to Daniel for three full weeks. In other words, Mr. Peanut. <laughs> Sorry about that. There wasn't supposed to be sound like I said, but I love Mr. Peanut. So, okay, so let me start back because I got distracted with that. So here we're told that Gabriel was hindered from coming to Daniel for three full weeks. So in other words, the satanic forces were trying to keep Gabriel from coming to Daniel in order to answer his prayer. Okay. So here we go. I got to pull up my next page of notes. Just one second. Yesterday, I wasn't even able to pull my notes up. It was crazy. I don't know what they're doing here with Google or whatever. Yeah, and when I keep my notes on paper, my dogs wind up tearing them up. Or, so <laughs> it's always something. <laughs> okay, so here I go. Okay, so next I'm gonna we're going to go to... Um, Revelation 12, 1 through 4, which is the woman and the dragon. Okay. 
So we're here in chapter 12. And we're reading about the angelic conflict in this chapter between God's angels and Satan's angels. And the angels that belong to Satan are the third that was cast out of heaven with him when he uh, thought he could take over God's throne. And that's how, you know, he, he became Satan. And he, he must certainly be a convincing liar in order to cause a third of the angels to believe, you know, that he could. That's crazy, right? So God created him an angel, a powerful angel. His beauty was magnificent, and he had the most prestigious and powerful position in heaven. As he was over all the angels, and he was God's anointed cherub. God made him so. At one time, there, there, there were no fallen angels. You know, all of the angels were faithful to God. And, you know, this terrible angel, he had honored the position of being in charge of all the angels. But because of pride and the desire to have God's position of being worshipped, he became sinful. And, you know, in my research, I've seen that his name is Samael. His name is Gadrael. His name, they call him Lucifer, which Lucifer is a um, misinterpretation, you know, that happened sometime back by um, Pope Benedict, I think it's Pope Benedict, or Benj I think it's yeah, Benedict, I think that's who it was, or Benjamin, I don't remember right this second, but you can research it, that was a misinterpretation, but, you know, it's it's amazing to me how these angels, these fallen angels, change their names, they have all these different names throughout history, you know, which makes it confusing, unless you really delve deep into some research to figure out that all these people are one and the same, you know, many of them. You know, like Diana, Isis, you know, etc. So, anyway, what I was saying was, God's position, you know, he, he was, he, he was, and it became simple. So, remember, he was a created angel. I mean, how can something created be more powerful than the creator, right? He's not. So, in Ezekiel 28, 13 through 17, we read about him. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God, of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, the topaz, and the diamond. The beryl, the onyx, and the jasper. The sapphire, the emerald, and the, carbun the carbuncle. And gold. The worksmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes, music was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. So you realize that Satan, when he was when he was actually created, the literal creation of Satan, he was made of gems. He he was he he was musically I mean he had musical that music was made in him. Pipes were made in him. He was made of beautiful stones, diamonds and stones and gold. You know, that's why he was called the shining one or the Nakash. Because when God created him, he literally created him to be a musical instrument himself. And a lot of people don't realize that. I mean, let me read that one more time. Ezekiel 28, 13 through 17. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. Okay. His covering, his flesh. The, the sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper. The sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The worksmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes, his pipes, music, you know, he, he was prepared in thee the day that thou was created. I mean, a lot of people don't know that. They don't realize how, you know, that's why they said he was the most beautiful of all the created beings because he was created of gems and gold, you know, and isn't it amazing right now he has charge over the earth and people are worshiping gems and gold you know and cash it's it's just wow okay i'm sorry i don't mean to get off track but it just it just amazes me these things so in verse 14 thou art the anointed cherub that covereth he watched over the throne of god and i have said thee so thou wast upon the holy mountain of god thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire 15 Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned pride. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, God's kingdom in heaven. And I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. 
So 17, thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Notice, thine, thy, thou, thy, thy. I mean, it was all his fault. No one else. I will cast thee to the ground. Notice he was cast to the ground, not hell. He was ne he's never been in hell. Okay. He was cast to the ground, to the earth. First Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. The son of God, who at the set time would come to the earth as the son of man, the Lord Jesus, was there when Satan, who then became Lucifer, who then became Satan, was cast out of heaven. Okay. I think he was Gadrael in heaven, but that's just my opinion. Luke 10, 18, and he said, and I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Isaiah 14, 12, we're told about him again here. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? 13, heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. 14. And will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. This will take place in Revelation 20 verses 1 through 3. As the Lord Jesus sets up his thousand year reign. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand, too. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, three, and cast him into the bottomless pit. Those are my grandbabies right there. <laughs> they got put in there by accident. <laughs> and shut him up. He was originally created Lucifer, son of the morning, but he is now the epitome of evil in the depth of degradation. So he is the most dangerous being and he is the root cause of death, sickness, rape. The bad thing we might think of originates with Satan. And he is constantly thinking of ways to cause havoc in the world. And he knows if he can start a conflict between countries, that multitudes of souls will wind up in hell if they die lost. And they'll never have another opportunity to be saved, you know, if they're killed in a war. Satan has had over 6,000 years to study mankind's weaknesses. That old nasty shatan. I mean, listen as I read from Revelation 12. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Okay, so, I mean, um, let us never one time doubt that God will keep his promise to his people, Israel. Israel will indeed be great in the sight of all nations as the king of the Jews is ruling the world from Jerusalem. I mean, Psalm 89, 34 through 37, God says this, 34, my covenant will I not break, nor after the thing that is gone out of my lips. 35, once I have sworn by my holiness that I will not lie unto David. 36, his seed shall endure forever and his throne as the sun before me. 37, it shall be established forever as the moon and as a faithful witness in heaven, Selah. So, um, two, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. In Revelation 12, two, the woman is pregnant and cried out as she was about to give birth. The child Jesus Christ was born before the travail. Israel's travail will occur during the tribulation. After Christ's birth, that occurred at least two millennia before the tribulation period. So Isaiah 66, 7 through 10, 7, before she travailed, before the tribulation time, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she delivered of a man-child. 
So eight, who hath heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. So nine, shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth? saith the Lord, shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb, saith the Lord? Ten, rejoice ye with Jerusalem, and be glad with her. All ye that love her, rejoice for joy with her, all ye that mourn for her. Three, and there appeared another woman in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. The cause of all the anti-Semitism in the world is the presence and hatred of Satan for the Jews. He is called great. This points to the magnitude of Satan's power and activity in the world. And red emphasizes his murderous and bloodthirsty character and behavior all throughout history. You know, the dragon, you know, it pictures his ferocious and intensely cruel nature, having seven heads and ten horns. Well, the seven heads in Revelation 17, 9, we read, and here is the mind which has wisdom, the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Rome is built on seven hills. Rome sits on seven mountains in this harlot of chapter 17. The end time false church is seen sitting. In other words, she's supported by Rome. And if you're sitting on something, it's supporting you. So we read about the seven heads again in both 13 and 17 and the, the ten horns. So, so this points to the ten nation confederation of the revived Roman Empire, the system of the beast. You know, seven crowns upon his heads in verse three. Seven crowns speaks of his ruling power and also the power and authority which was given him. And he has and will have great power, especially in the last days. So today often, you know, appears as an angel of light. You know, he often appears as an angel of light and he rides, you know, showing himself that way. But he actually hides his true identity. You know, in the tribulation, though, he will be seen for what he really is, guys. So let's remember that Satan is not on any par with God, but a rebellious being created, you know, he's a created angel by God. But because of his rebellion, he's now Satan. You know, Satan was defeated and judged at the cross of Jesus, and he paid all the sin debt. You know, Jesus paid it all for us. So let's also remember that Satan is still the ruler of the air and the prince of the world until the return of Jesus with all his saints. Now, we're told in Ephesians uh, 2, 1 through 2, Satan retains the power given him until the day he's finally thrown into the lake of fire, which occurs in Revelation 20, uh, 7 through 11. And it's important that none of the attribution, you know, the, the attri attributions of God are applied to Satan because Satan is not omniscient as God. He's not omnipotent as God, nor is he omnipresent as God. OK, we have to remember that, too. And then uh, four, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered or to devour her child as soon as it was born. So in this chapter, the dragon is seen standing in front of the woman so that when she delivered the child, Jesus, he would devour him. And this has always been Satan's tactic. You know, throughout Israel's history, Satan has tried to destroy the Messianic line of Christ from the rebellion of um, Absalom to Queen. Um, I think it's Athaliah, Athaliah. I, I never can pronounce these names correct. I botch them. You have to forgive me. And, uh, you know, she tried to kill the whole royal family of Judah, but only um, Joash, he, he was protected. Joash. And Second Chronicles 22, 10 through 12. But when the mother saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal of the house of Judah. But Jehoshabeth, the daughter of the king, took Joash to the son of Ahaziah, Ahaziah, forgive me, and stole him from among the king's sons that were slain. 
and put him and his nurse in a bedchamber. So, you know, the daughter of the king, the wife, you know, uh, the priest, she was, you know, the sister of Ahaziah. And she hid him so that, you know, she slew him not. And he was with them, you know, hid in the house of God six years. And he reigned over the land. So Satan, he, he did the same through, through Haman or Haman's attempt to destroy all the Jews in the book of Esther. As well as in the attempt to destroy the child Jesus. And sending out his order to kill all the children two years old and younger in Bethlehem and its surrounding areas, you know, through the order of King um, Herod. Since Satan, you know, he can't be at all places at once, nor observe everyone and their thoughts. These other fallen angels or demons, you know, depending on which one you want to consider, you know, they're out in the world, you know, which at this present time, Satan's ruling to a certain extent. Remember, fallen angels, they're they're immortal unless God, you know, ends them and they have bodies. Demons are disembodied spirits of the giants. So, you know, they're just spirits. They're the Raphaim, the dead things, which are the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim. So in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, and whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. The devil has assigned certain powerful demons to keep chaos among the nations, you see. So angels have a, they have a free will. And some of them, you know, they chose to follow Satan in his rebellion against God. I mean, listen, the angels are in different orders, ranks, and positions and have various powers and abilities. And they all look different, you know what I mean? I mean, in, in Colossians 1.16, For by him were all things created that are in heaven, and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Okay. You no, know, so like in all great armies, there's a rank, you know, a structure. And we're told here that he created thrones which would be the Archangel Michael, the messenger angel Gabriel, and other special envoys. You know, there are dominions, which would be the cherubim and seraphim, right? And then there are principalities, which would be, in our way of thinking, the generals of the angelic hosts. And powers would be perhaps the private, such as, um, you know, they serve as guardian angels, Hebrews 1, 4. I mean, some angels... In the rank of principalities, that is, the generals, they fell away to join with Satan. And notice what's said about principalities. In Ephesians 6, 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So Satan also has his angels organized according to rank. Just as one army is set over against another army, there are generals on both sides. Satan's principalities are generals. They seem to have oversight of nations. And his powers are, are the privates of his army who are demons that seek to possess human beings. So the rulers of the darkness of this world are demons that have charge of Satan's worldly business. So we can think of what we see right here in our own government. It seems as though our own government is doing as it pleases, regardless of what it's, it's um, you know, pinned down in the Constitution, and regardless of what the people of the country want. You know, I mean, we can see the demons are busy in the affairs, you know, of, of our dictators in the world. You know, then there's a spiritual wickedness in, in, in the heavenlies, which are the demons who have charge of religion. Satan's department of religion is the largest department of all, guys. He is in the business of religion. Satan is not against religion. He's promoting religion. Not Christ, not Jesus, but religion. You see, it's different. Satan wants you to have religion to keep you content until it's too late. He doesn't even care if you go to a good Bible-believing church. You know, maybe sing in the choir or even teach a Sunday school class. Just don't get saved. You know, with each passing day, there are people that are faithful, you know, going to church, but suddenly they die and they die lost. 
and that's just fine with Satan. He hates the entire human race. I mean, even these poor souls that worship Satan, he hates them too, and soon they'll be gone. These two groups move in, in an arena of this universe, you know what I mean, in which we live, and they're engaged in ceaseless warfare to capture the souls of men. And there's many religions, but only one salvation, guys. One salvation. In John chapter 3, Jesus dogmatically declares you must be born again. Since Satan cannot be all places at once, nor observe everyone on their thoughts. You know, these other fallen angels or, or demons, they're out in the world, you know, which at this present time, Satan's ruling to a certain extent. And 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. And that's a little G God, okay? That's not our, the big, that's not the big guy. You know what I mean? So, anyway, let me come over here and read the chat real quick and see what I missed. Hey, uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, you're right. Let me come up a little higher so I can see what all you said. Okay. Usually, uh, Roots Magoo comes and joins us and, uh, Mandela Mall, but I guess they were busy today. Yep. Yeah, no fear, you're right. <laughs> yeah, my grandchildren are crazy. They're, they're good babies, though, they are. Yep. Yeah, it's all a mess. It, it's 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 got to come to an end, you know. What I'm just wondering is, you know, the United States is such a big experiment, you know, going on. And if they, if they, you know, take us out, you know, we're the light of the earth, or we used to be. So if they take us out, you know, the light goes out, does that mean the whole world's in darkness? I'm just wondering, you know, that's just kind of like what I feel. I'm just saying, for example, you know, we used to be the beacon of light for God, but you know, I think they've kind of transformed it now where everything is upside down. Now we're like the big Satan, like, you know, people around the world like to call us, you know, the country, you know, in general, not the people, because there's a lot of good people in this country, you know. Yeah. All right. Let me see here. What time is it? Uh, it took me forever just to get going and get live today because of my internet. I had to go rearrange some wires and everything else. <laughs> Let's see here. I may do one more chapter right quick because I just don't know what's going to happen with this internet tomorrow. Okay. Kind of give me a drink. I messed around so long, my coffee got cold. It's starting to taste like iced coffee now. <laughs> okay, let me see here. All right. I'm just looking through my notes. Yeah, I've I've gone all I pretty much I've gone through the whole book. I've been going through the whole book of Revelation, just you know, trying to give people more insight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yes. All oh, thanks to the Holy Spirit for this wisdom and ability to do this. It's not real easy to do, you know. Okay, so, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and talk real quick about uh, the war between gods and angels and demons. That's going to be Revelation um, 40. 12, 1 through 9. Okay. Give me one second.
Hey there, Roots Magoo. I see you. <laughs> I was just talking about you, Sam. Oh, he probably got busy today. All right. So, um, this is Revelation 40, 12, 1 through 9, the war between God's angels and demons. So, let's continue to think on the angelic war in this 12th chapter between God's angels and Satan's angels. And, um, you know, the angels that belong to Satan are a third, and that was cast out of heaven with him when he thought he could take over God's throne. I mean, that's how proud he is, you know? I mean, he illustrates what a convincing liar he is as he causes a third of the angels to believe that he could actually take over God's throne. I mean, how proud, how, how prideful, you know, how proud. I mean, God created him an angel, a powerful angel, and he was the most beautiful in all heaven. And he had the most prestigious power and position in heaven as he was over all the angels. And, you know, God had made him the anointed cherub. I mean, there's so much here in chapter 12. And we must not be in a big hurry. I mean, let's learn about him and his evil ways. I mean, at one time, there were no fallen angels, right? All the angels were faithful to God. Lucifer had the honor position, which he wasn't Lucifer. You know, like I said, that was a misinterpretation. So, but he had the honor position of being in charge of all the angels. But because of his pride and the desire to have God's position worshipped, he became sinful. And remember, he was created. So how can something created be more powerful than the actual creator? You know, we already read about him in Isaiah 14. Okay, just one second. So it was Isaiah 14, um, 12 through 15, and Ezekiel 28, 13 through 17. So um, Revelation chapter 12, 1 says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. The image of the sun, moon, and um, 12 stars seems to be in a, you know, an allusion to Joseph's dream in Genesis 37, 9 through 11, where the sun and moon are in, identified as Joseph's parents and the 12 stars represent the 12 sons of Jacob and ultimately the 12 tribes of Israel. So two, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. I've already pointed out, you know, that the woman is Israel. Israel. So we see here in verse two, that the woman is pregnant and cried out as she was about to give birth and the child Jesus Christ was born before she travails. The woman Israel's travail will occur during the tribulation and the tribulation is her travail. Isaiah 66, 7 and 8. Before she travailed, you know, before the tribulation time, she brought forth, before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. 8. Who hath heard such a thing? Who hath seen such things? 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And he's called great. This points to the magnitude of Satan's power and activity in the world. And the red emphasizes his murderous and bloodthirsty character and behavior all throughout history. And the dragon, you know, it, to me it pictures his ferocious and intense, you know, cruel nature. You know, having seven heads. And we have to remember, too, that... Uh, in the UK, they have a dragon flag, and China has a flag with a dragon. You know, the flags have something to do with it as well. You know, the ten heads and uh, all that, you know, it's really easy to find out all this information, who they are and what's going on. So let's read the verse again and try to stay in context. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> as three. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. So, you know, we can clearly see that the main subject in this verse is the great red dragon, and that he was adorned with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. So sometimes, you know, it's hard to determine when a passage is speaking about the king or the kingdom, since the kingdom often represents a king from whom it gets its character. And um, the seven heads are seven historic Gentile kingdoms, which are represented by seven kings or rulers. And these seven refer to the major world um, empires up to the time of Rome, 
which also were connected with the nation of Israel and her enslavements. Just one second, please. Where the dogs are sleeping? Yeah, they're sleeping. Okay. Sorry about that. My, my husband needing me. <laughs> okay. So um, we have Egypt. We have Assyria. We have Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome. And the seventh head is really a future kingdom, although it has historical roots in the sixth kingdom, which is Rome, the revived Roman Empire. And the Ten Horns, this points to the Ten Nation Confederation of the Revived Roman Empire, the system of the beast. And the seven crowns upon his heads in verse 3, the seven crowns speaks of his ruling power and also the power and authority which was given him. So he has and will have great power, especially in the last days. And today he often appears as an angel of light. You know, he hides his true identity. But in the tribulation, he will be seen exactly for what he is. Ephesians 2, 1 through 2 tells us that he is the prince and power of the air. 2 Corinthians 4, 4, we read that Satan is the god of this age, the happenings in the world. Okay. And 4, in whom the god of this world or age has blinded the minds of them which believe not. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered. For to devour her child as soon as it was born. So the angels that belong to Satan are the third that was cast out of heaven with him. When he you know, thought he could take over God's throne. And that's how, how he became Satan. I mean he illustrates what a convincing liar he is as he causes a third you know, of the angels to fall. I mean, let me remind us that the devil knows, you know, what's in the Bible. And he, you know, he, he had not forgotten what God told him in, in Genesis 3.15, that the seed of the woman would crush his head. You know, he was on the lookout for the seed of the woman. And only God knows how long Satan was on the earth before mankind was ever created. Remember, he and his angels were cast out of heaven. It's all speculation for anyone to say maybe hundreds or maybe thousands of years. Satan was there when God created Adam and Eve. He heard what God told Adam in Genesis 1. And you have to remember in Genesis 1, whenever he says in the beginning, okay, the beginning is the first fruits and that's Jesus. So Jesus was there as well. I mean, God commanded Adam to subdue the earth. That means to tread upon this implies a degree of sovereignty and control. And with the fall of man in chapter 3 came a curse upon the ground and the animal kingdom. Thus man's control is not what Adam's was before his sin. In Genesis 2.15, God put Adam in the garden and commanded him to dress it and keep it. You know, from the very beginning, it was God's plan that man work and be a fully responsible steward of God's creation. You know, Genesis 1 26, let them have dominion indicates that from the moment of his creation, man was fully capable of exercising control over his own environment. Man was created with dominion over all living creatures. That's verse 26. So certainly the devil is using the snake. You know what I mean? First Timothy 2, 13 and 14 for Adam was first formed, then he. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. And first uh, Peter 3, 7 says the woman is the weaker vessel. And second Corinthians 11, 3 says the serpent beguiling Eve through his subtle, you know, subtlety. And to beguile is to overcome somebody sexually. Just so you know, you know, I mean, with the first words of the serpent, it becomes apparent that an enemy of God is speaking. For he says, yea, you know, ye hath God, I mean, yea, hath God said, God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden so the words from a question which was designed to cast doubt upon god's goodness and yet at the same time seems to imply 
that if the serpent is misinformed, he is willing to be instructed in this in the matter. You know what I mean? So notice how, you know, coming he is and how he, you know, he, he's trying to keep Eve at ease, you know. Instead of turning away, the woman engages in dialogue with the serpent, thereby revealing that she did not really realize that the serpent was her enemy. You know, that's why he operates in the way he does. He tries to make sin appear really not at all that bad after all, you know. It's not that bad. <laughs> but Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And because of the fall of man, there in Eden, Satan now rules the kingdoms of the world. And if you'll recall, he told the Lord Jesus therein, Matthew 4, 8, and 9. Again, the devil taketh him up in, into an exceeding high mountain and sheweth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, all these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. You know, remember Jesus had been fasting for what, 40 days? You know, 40 days without any food. He was, he was weak. But, but his spirit was strong. You know what I mean? For his God. Yeah. So the devil, he hadn't forgotten what, you know, God told him in Genesis 3.15. You know, that the seed of the woman would crush his head. So, he, you know, he had his eye on the woman in Israel. And he knew that God had declared, you know, what he declared was going to come to pass. And, four, and the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, to de or devour her child as soon as it was born. Now, this woman here in this verse is talking about Israel. But let me say that when the woman Eve brought forth her firstborn son, the devil set out to kill the promised seed. You know, that's how he works. Mm -hmm. Exactly how he works. Okay. So, you know, Genesis 4, 1 and 2, Adam knew his wife. He knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I've gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel and Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and, and slew him. So just think of it. The very first human being born into this world was the first murderer. I mean, the devil tried, you know, all down through the years to wipe out the promised seed. He used people and he directed certain people to kill children, stabbing at the promised seed. Even at the time of Jesus' birth, the devil influenced King Herod to kill all the children two years old and younger. But the angel of the Lord had already told Joseph in a dream to flee into Egypt until he was told to return. And at the death of Herod, Gabriel visited Joseph again and told him to return. You know, divine intervention. Satan did everything he could to keep Jesus from going to the cross and paying that sin debt. And don't you ever think that Satan was glad to see Jesus die on the cross? Oh, no. Because Jesus said in John 12, 31 and 32, now is the judgment of the world now shall the prince, which is Satan, of this world be cast out. 32. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. All men will indeed stand before him at the judgment. Jesus died on the cross in our place. Satan knew that his doom was sealed. And so now his goal is to damn as many souls to hell as he can. He hates God and he hates everything that God loves. And he causes wars among the nations. Anything to kill men, and he knows most of the troops that die are not saved, and he doesn't want any of them to have the opportunity to be saved, and he is working behind the scenes and causing these young mothers to have abortions, to kill God's children. I mean, don't you be so naive as to think that things are going to get better. On the contrary, things are going to become worse and worse with each passing day. 2 Timothy 3, 1 and 13 this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Satan is the root cause of every evil thing you can think of. But you and I that are saved know the truth and are to tell it far and near. 
5. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. You that might be looking at your Bibles, and if you will notice, you know, the little mark that's after the word iron, realize that this takes in the lifespan of the Lord Jesus. His 33 years on earth are ended at this point as he goes to the cross and then ascends up into heaven. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. This verse takes in the death of Jesus on the cross and also his resurrection as he ascends to heaven. You know, his death, burial, and then resurrection was a was a must in order to defeat Satan. And these this shows us that he was resurrected, you know, by his ascension. You know, he went to hell and retrieved the keys to the kingdom. Amen. Woo. Getting a little Holy Spirit on me now. Hairs are standing up. I'm getting chills. <laughs> Acts 1, 9 through 11. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into the heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like, man, like a manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Hebrews 2.14 tells us, As for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy the, him that had the power of death, and that is the devil. Colossians 2.15 um, 15, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly triumphing over them in it in his death and resurrection so 12 6 is a foe a view of what will be described in 12 13 through 17 6 and the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of god that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days three and a half years the last half of the tribulation John saw Israel as having fled into the wilderness where God protected her 1260 days, three and a half years during the second half of the tribulation period. The verb prepared suggests that God and perhaps angels and even the 144,000 will care for the Jews at this time. This could be who they might be in verse six. It could be, you know, prepared means it's already taken care of. So God has preserved his people in both the past and present and will continue to do so in the future. And we believe that this place is Petra in Jordan. I mean, I know that nowadays airplanes can fly over places and drop bombs, but I personally believe God will be working in a situation and no planes will fly over Petra. One reason will be that five, six of, of Russia and Iran and the rest of Gog and Magog Coalition will be destroyed by God himself on the mountains of Israel, according to Ezekiel 38 and 39, as that one sided battle is at the middle of the tribulation. As no man will intervene in this. It'll be the very hands of God that destroys these, these, these people. So we believe that this is a reference to Israel fleeing to the rock fortress of Petra, you know, there in Jordan, where she'll be safe for the last half of the seven year trip. Okay. So there you have it. Hopefully everything was cohesive. Understandable, you know, hopefully it came out properly. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and pull my notes up for tomorrow so I've got them ready. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end it there because I've been on here for a minute. Yeah, hour and 15 minutes. Feels like I've been on here all day. <laughs> it feels like I've been talking all day. <laughs> but, you know, I really enjoy studying the Word of God. You know, and if anybody differs a tiny, you know, a tiny bit or anything from what I've said, you know, it's okay. We all, we all differ, you know, according to how we're taught. You know, if, if there's something I've said that you don't agree with, well, you know, just do your, do your work, do your studies and, if you find me wrong, come back and let me know, and we'll we'll work it out. You know, because um, 
that's all we can do to come together in fellowship you know that's what that's why we're here we're here to learn you know and i'm i'm learning right alongside you guys Oh, thank you, Eliza. <laughs> thank you so much. You're right, Roots. You're right. Everything has to get hijacked. You weren't here earlier, Roots, whenever I was talking about this. Um, I had seen Rex Bear over there uh, speaking earlier. And he, he had brought up the fact that... um. You know, the great sign in heaven, which occurred on um, September the 23rd of 2017, that it has occurred previously four times already in history. Um, it occurred in 1827, 1483, 1293, and 1056. So in a thousand years, we've had, we've had this sign happen four times, you know. And so uh, I'm thinking that these are pointing towards resets, you know, you know how we learn, we know that there's nothing new under the sun, right? So, you know, think about that. I mean, the storyline in Revelation 12 has happened four times in the past already. Mm-hmm. And that's why I say a lot, a lot of times scripture is referencing what's happening in the, in the, in the heavens, you know, in the stars. And what I was saying is, you know, if America is, you know, a great experiment, and if America falls, will darkness, you know, take rule of the whole, of the whole world? And I'm just wondering that, you know. I mean, what I had seen there um, were the, the seven heads and the ten horns, which is G10, is what he was saying. And the ten crowns, you know, he said the um, Council of Nicaea controls much, you know, of the, the publishings of, and the ability for us to obtain our scripture. And um, also, you know, a lot of our scriptures are older than what we think because they go all the way back to Sumer and Babylon, Mesopotamia. You know what I mean? And they they exceed they they go back before the Hebrew, even further back. You know, I found that out myself. You know, in the Council of Nicaea, you know, they're from Turkey. You know, by the Roman Emperor Constantine, and and there were several councils of Nicaea, not just one. So you know. I'm just wondering about this stuff. I wonder if, if, you know, some of our texts really are clues, you know, to what's going on here. You know, we have multiple meanings, you know, to all these things here. You know, the signs and the symbols and the keys, you know, and the portals <laughs> and the doors. You know what I'm saying? But 325 was the first council of Nicaea. It was created then. And they adopted the information, a lot of it, to fit the times. So, you know, then you find out, you know, the dragon is an order, you know, and much more than, you know, a constellation. You know, meanwhile, behind the scenes, you know, we have this interdimensional type dragon, you know, that only makes itself known, you know, to these individuals who seek him, you know, or find him. You know, and, and that and then he gives power, you know, to the beast. And, you know, humans are called the beast of the field in the Bible. So think about it. It's, yeah, I mean, there's so much more knowledge and information out there, you know, if you really delve a little deeper. So it's it becomes way more comprehensive, you know. There's so many facets to all this stuff. Okay, guys. Revelation 12 already happened. Ends of ages. Well... Yeah, well, that's 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 the purpose for me showing you all these pictures here. You know, I mean, there's different ages. Yeah, it it, it can be confusing if it, if it's too um if it's if it's above your level of, of of understanding of the Word of God. You know, because some people, you know, I can just tell you this much: that there's babies in the Word that are crawling, 
Then you have other people in the word that are walking and some that are jogging and some that are running marathons. So if that's above your comprehension level, just just ixnay on that until until you um you you uh, grow in the word a little further because it could be too it could be too confusing for some people. And I don't I don't mean to be confusion is not from God, you know. So I do not want to cause confusion for anybody. Yeah, you know. So if you find that confusing, just just um put that out of your, out of your head. You know, until you grow a little bit further in, in, in Father's Word. Yeah, because we have we have a lot of things that are hidden from us, good and bad, you know? Yeah. All right. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at that and get out of here. And Eliza, I hope I didn't cause you any confusion. Well, in Jesus' name, please, Lord, don't let me cause her any confusion. That's not my intention. Okay. All right, running out of the four years. Oh. <laughs> yeah, right, <laughs> right, Rich. Okay, good deal, sweetie. Okay, I'm so glad. Yay! I'm glad I'm not causing confusion, you know, because that's not my intent. But, um. Anyway, all right. I'm gonna get out of here, and I'm gonna pick back up tomorrow between sometime between three and four, um, on Revelation. 41 12 1 through 17 the war continues okay all right peace be still be with you guys great light may you be surrounded with a white light of protection and angels may they surround you and keep you safe and in good harmony stay in joy remember we are a joyful people because we are saved by father's grace amen don't let that devil come in and try to steal your joy that's not possible rebuke him and send him packing <laughs> all right you guys yes well thank you for coming in eliza i appreciate you being here and roots out you know i appreciate you so much and um you guys stay safe and um i'll see you. god willing i'll see you tomorrow if i'm still here kicking and uh, you guys have time to come back in and study with me a little more give me a like give me a share if you want to help me grow the channel okay I'll never ask anybody for money. I'm just here to learn and grow with everybody else. Thank you. Bye-bye.